The most famous mafia town in Sicily is Corleone and its most famous mafia boss is Don Carleone. Now, what does that mean, Don Corleone? The internet says that the Don title comes out of the Latin Dominus for Lord or Master, which is, of course, wrong. I mean, where's the N? As Dominus is written with an M, and we're not looking for the title Dom, but for the title Don with an N. Don means a lord of Pharaoh's nobility from the Hebrew word Adonai or Adonai, which the Freemasons use when they talk about Jesus Christ in a manner full of contempt, Adonai. So here it says, Adonai is a Hebrew word that translates as Lord of Lord Master from its derivation, sovereignty. People throughout the Old Testament use the word Adonai when addressing humans who were master or Lord over them, like Don Corleone in this case. Well, you can read the rest yourself. Um, also here, when in, here in Samuel 24, 8, when David has the chance to take the life of the king of Israel, Saul, who's trying to kill him, and he chooses to spare Saul, he emerges from a cave he has been hiding and calls Saul, my lord, Adonai, its root form in the Hebrew similar to Adonai. We also see other instances scattered throughout the Old, the Old Testament. Um, there are 334 more instances where it appears in the Old Testament where it's, they use the word Adonai. So Adonai in a human and sometimes angelic sense appears to be acknowledging a person who has power or leadership over another person. For instance, in the example of Saul listed above, David acknowledges that Saul has leadership over him, like Don Corleone, even though he had the chance to end Saul's life. He didn't take it because he realized God placed Saul as a ruler in his life for a reason. So this word here, here it is again, Adonai, in the middle, Don, like in Don Corleone, it comes from Adon, I, Adonai. The word Don is also found in Don Quixote. The Zorro character of Don Alejandro, or this fella here, also called the Don, a person having power over others, from Adonai, the Don. So, around the Mediterranean, in countries like Spain, Israel, or Italy, the word Don is used for a aristocratic lord, as in Don Corleone of the Mafia, a person having power over others. Corleone comes etymologically from the Italian words cuore for heart. Here you can see it, Italian, cuore, English heart and leone for 
lion, all together a lion's heart for Cor Leone. It says in Italian Leone, like in Cor Leone. It is in English for Leone, a lion. Together with Don for Don Corleone, that makes the Lord Lionheart, which is, of course, King Richard Lionheart, who arrives in Sicily in the year 1190. So, Don Corleone is, of course, a reference to King Richard the Lionheart, the Crusader King. As I've proven you in this six hour film here, the relation between the Mafia, the nobility, and the Knights Templars, who are all the same, just divided into a legal Mafia and the illegal mafia. So here's the title of the film on the same channel, Gyuri. Anyway, the nobility and their Knights Templars have always been the biggest mafia throughout history until the present day. And this confather here is related to Richard Don Corleone Lionheart and all these royals. As I've proven you in this video here on my channel Homeland Security. Yeah, Homeland Security, and here's the title Pharaoh Trump, Genealogy Blood Ties to Killery. Global King Aristocracy Masters over U.S. Slaves, or us slaves. King Richard Lionheart could probably not even speak English, as he lived in the south of France most of the time, where he was called Richard Corleone, like Corleone. Lyon. Here you can see it. Here, Richard the Lionheart. He had only spent six months in England during his entire reign. In Norman French, which King Richard also spoke, it is Cor de Lyon. But King Richard Cor Lyon wrote everything down in French, his mother tongue. A native language almost, though he was in fact born in England. We might as well say King Richard Corleone, the royal mafia boss, using Sicily as a bridgehead to sail to Jerusalem and Acres to go into the Crusades. King Richard Don Corleone of the all-powerful Pharaonic Mafia clan. By the way, King Richard waged a war against the Sicilian people, just as the Mafia does, who wage a war against the Sicilian and against the Italian people. King Richard Don Corleone even burned down the Sicilian town of Messina in the year 1190, and his men raped the Sicilian women. Absolute mafia style, if you ask me. Yeah, this is in Wikipedia, Richard I of England, and in Norman French, his name was Le Cor de Lyon, eh? Corleone. Uh, Richard probably spoke both French and Occitan, which is uh, in the south of France. 
He was born in England, where he spent his childhood before becoming king. However, he lived most of his adult life in the Duchy of Aquitaine. Following his accession, he spent very little time, perhaps as six months only, in England. So he was born here in Beaumont Palace in Oxford, England. And he was the, uh, the great grandson of um, William the Conqueror. And here, here it says he was six feet five inches tall. He was red, blondish, and light eyed with a pale complexion. Six feet, one meter is 96. Could have been a good rugby player. What a pity he wasted his time and his talent in all these crusades. What a pity. Well, you can read it all yourself, but I wanted to show you this. This is the occupation of Sicily. So in September 1190, Richard and Philip arrived in Sicily after the death of King William II of Sicily. In 1189, his cousin Tancred had seized power. So in 1190, Richard Lionheart, he came to Sicily. And Richard, yeah, Richard attacked Messina, which is a mafia town, capturing it on October 4th, 1190. After looting and burning the city down, Richard established his base, his base there. And um, after this, he went uh, here. In the next year, in 1191, Richard left Messina for Acres, uh, Saint-Jean d'Acre, another Templar base in, um, in the Middle East, you know, going to the Crusades and all that. Oh, not very holy land. I, I don't see what's holy about it, really. Nothing. It's only about wars and killing and raping and looting and lying and whatever, you know. And all this religious hocus pocus. Well, you read it yourself, you know, it's, it's, it's a crusader king, eh? And he was in Sicily. Corleone. King Richard Lionheart's body is buried in France at the Fontevraud Royal Abbey in a town called Saumur. Richard Lionheart, or should we say Liar's Heart, with this Corleone story, was the great grandson of William the Conqueror. He was, he was more than six feet tall a redhead, and he had three lions in his coat of arms for the concept of three, which is them, our masters. So here's the Wikipedia page of the Sicilian town of Corleone. And as always, we'll first look at the symbols and logos, which in this case, shows the royal crest of Corleone with a lot of red for Pharaoh's Per Tasser red house of Lower Egypt being a reference to our nobility still ruling over Europe and their European slaves. The crest shows a lion holding a heart with a crown on top of that. The crown says king, added by lion heart, <laughs> no doubt referring to the crusader king Richard Lionheart, whose name in Italian is Corleone. On the crest it says Animoso Civitas Corleonis, which means the spirited city of Corleone. Spirited by whom? Well, 
by the spirit of King Richard the Lionheart and his Mafia descendants and Mafia Crusader companions, of course. Now, this is why the British increment came to kill Judge Falcone and why no government will ever act to stop the Mafia, to stop the drug trade, because all governments belong to the new horizontal rule of that very same nobility gang. You see the lion with a heart, lion heart, the crown, it only means king. And it says animosa civitas corleonis. And if we scroll down here, you know, it says here, yeah, the or origine del nome, the origins of the name. I tell you, they don't know anything. Well, they probably do know, but they're not going to tell you. It says nothing. It's so obvious, you know. Uh, it's so obvious, and they say nothing here as well. Uh, what is it? Symboli. They they don't even trans translate this. Animoso civitas corleones. Nothing. They're hiding everything. Everything is omerta, and not only in Sicily. Eh? So here's the translation: Animosa civitas corleones, from Latin into English, the spirited city of Corleone. Why do you think all this religious Adonai stuff gets always shown with a lion? Huh? Adonai, Don Corleone, King Richard Lionheart, Corleone with a lion in its crest. Because this Lord Don Adonai Master's royal pharaonic house of King David is all the same aristocratic lion stuff. Having the ecclesiastical mafia, the Sicilian mafia, the royal mafia, the Knights Templar mafia, the Swiss mafia, all converging back into their pharaonic origins and their lions of ancient Egypt. Do you want to continue to be the lamb in the hands of these bloodthirsty nobility lions and their Adonais? Or shall we become northern wolves? and protect our nest. Of course, Alistair Crowley in Cephalo, Sicily, knew about Don R Richard Corleone Lionheart, thus giving weight to the persistent rumours that former president's wife, Barbara Bush, is somehow related to Alistair Crowley. How else could Mr. Crowley be in Sicily and not having problems with the Mafia? Only because he must have known about his most likely royal bloodline connected to Sicily and Richard Don Corleone Lionheart. The king's name was not Lionheart, because he was brave, having the heart of a lion. No, it's because the lion is the symbol of the nobility, always lions holding a royal crest. And here you can see page after page after page, all nobilities, royal crests full of lions. Lions, 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 lions. Like Adonai. 
It's the nobility. Richard Lionheart. Corleone. I think this was his, the official, the original crest of uh, Richard Lionheart. The one with the three lions, you know, the concept of three. Uh, that's the uh, the crest of the Royal House of England. Yeah, there it was. Here it is. It says here, England Royal Coat of Arms. There you go. Lions, lions. Not a single wolf, eh? <laughs> Our masters. So you want to be, you want to continue to be a lamb and being chased by these bloodthirsty lions? Or do you want to be a wolf, a Nordic wolf, and start defending the nest? So, lion heart is merely a reference to where his heart lies. His heart lies with the nobility, his clan, lion's heart. And this one here is the coat of arms of Richard's descendants. And here you see Richard's three lions. And this is the coat of arms of his descendants and the royals of today, Queen Elizabeth and the rest of them. When the nobility talks about lions, it just refers to their clan, nothing more. I wouldn't know what's brave about a lion anyway. Lions are killers just as the nobility are, a bunch of assassins and mass murderers, the same as their mafia pals, Don Corleone, the royal mafia. And this royal mafia have a similar initiation ritual as the Knights Templars have. Both a blood sacrifice ritual and both Templars and Mafia using Christian saints. As Christianity is the most bloodthirsty religion anyway, where in two world wars millions of Christians slaughtered millions of other Christians. I don't know about you, but I see a whole field full of Christian crosses, where consequently Christians are buried, butchered by the millions by other Christians. Facts, people, facts. These are facts. The Mafia initiation blood ritual consists of cutting up a finger so blood flows on a card with an image of the Christian and jaywalker Archangel Saint Michael. Then, under a lot of oaths and silence and loyalty, the card gets burned. All of this is pharaonic black magic by the wizards of ancient Egypt, still alive amongst the Mafia and amongst the nobility and their Freemasons. The Freemason initiation ritual comes out of the Knights Templars, where during the initiation ritual with the very same Mafia incantations about silence and loyalty. The tip of a sword is pushed into one's breast to have a little blood drawn out 
in this blood ritual of the Freemasons out of the Knights Templars. The US Navy SEALs do the same blood ritual called seal pinning or army pinning. When they ram the tridents into their chests with another one hitting on it with a fist, and after which they are part of this military brotherhood and the killing can start. When the octagon lets loose this gang of state killers upon the various peoples in the world who just seek their freedom from the US New World Order and their Freemason blood rituals inside the US Freemason commanded US Army. So here it says about blood pinning. Well, I'm not going to read it, you know, you read it yourself. And it's a Freemason tradition. The blood flows at exactly the same spot as the Freemasons do at the left part of the of the breast where the heart is and i mean what is a freemason a so-called you know a political wing what what are they doing with a sword anyway you know so it's all from the knights templars yeah blood pinning it's a freemason tradition well because they give the orders in the uh in the US Army. Might just as well call it Freemason blood pinning. Eh? So in this blood ritual, it's the same as the Mafia does. You know, it's all it all comes out of the Knights Templars. The Mafia, the US Army, the uh, the Freemasons, they all do it. The Nazis did it. You know, doing a tattoo under the arm and also blood coming out. It's all the same. I'll read a little bit for you. Blood wings. So the, these are the US paratroopers who do this in Wikipedia. Blood wings is a traditional initiation rite. Well, there you go. There you go. It's an initiation that is endured by many graduates of the US States Army Airborne School and the United States Army Air Assault School and sometimes practice in other military training environments, including the Army Aviation and Aviation Logistics Community. It is called blood pinning in the, that, that's a Freemason word, eh? blood pinning in the United States Marine Corps. Although it is rare, some Air Force Academy cadets receive their upper class prop and wings insignia via the blood wings tradition. Upon receiving the parachutist badge, an instructor or comrade of the graduate places the pins of the badge pointed into the chest of the graduate. The badge is then slammed into, against the graduate's chest, resulting in the pins driven into the flesh. If the graduation is affiliated with a particular unit number, unit 14, for example, then the pin will often be pounded deeper into the muscle the same number of times, 14 times in this case. The origins of this tradition are unknown. Yeah, 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 the origins are unknown. Well, I just told you what they are. But most likely they date back to World War II. Yeah, okay, paratrooper training, okay, yeah. This practice is fairly secretive, it is, and sparked controversy recently when knowledge of it reached the public, which is often critical about painful forms of hazing. Blood wings are against armed forces policy, yeah, yeah, but they let it happen, eh? And are prohibited. Recipients of blood wings consider it a highly honorable rite of passage, yeah. Oh, nice, eh? Well, I, it's all from the Freemasons and the Knights Templars. The Mafia does it. They all do it. They're all fraternities, eh? And the moment they've done it, you know, it's, it's black magic. It's voodoo. It's black stuff. It's from the Wizard of Egypt. All this stuff, you know, a blood sacrifice. And the killing starts, you know. The U.S. Army killers, the Navy SEAL killers, 
the uh, the mafia killers, the Templar killers, the Freemason killers, nobility killers, right? they all do it. The US Navy SEALs and US Airborne Paras work together with the mafia, with whom they share this same initiation blood ritual. So the US Navy SEALs and US Airborne Paras protect the US drugs trade, let's say in Afghanistan, where the US Navy SEALs and US Airborne kill the Taliban who forbid the opium trade. And this is a shield from the, year, the years 2000 to 2001 when the Taliban, they forbade opium trade and opium use because it's not Islamic. And this is a real shield they had up in these times. So, you know, the people you've seen and the women who got flocked like, you know, by the, by the Western media liars, they didn't get flocked because they were not loyal to their husbands or some media lies. No, they got flocked because they did opium trade and the Taliban forbade it. I read it out loud for you. The Islamic Emirate of Afghanistan, so I'm talking 2000, 2001. The Islamic Emirate of Afghanistan not only considers illegal things forbidden, but launches ex effective struggles against illicit drugs as these drugs are a great threat to personality, wisdom, life, health, economy and morality. I'd say we need the Taliban in Europe, in the US, and they, they get rid of the drug business and the whole drug trade in, within 24 hours. I tell you, people, we are being lied to. And, and look at the bad English. So, so this is not some sort of a copy or a fraud. This is real. These are guys who can't speak English. And you know, so, you know. And here it says in Afghan and in Arabic, probably, or the other way around. I don't know. This is why the US Army was in Afghanistan. Um, Biden lying, you know, saying, well, we retract the US Army from Afghanistan because already too many poor American lives have been lost. And, and I thought by myself, well, they need the army, the U.S. Army, in another place in the world. I, I look what's happening now, preparing a war, you know, in the Ukraine. You know, they're all gathering their armies and all their goodies and missiles. And the, the liars, they all say, no, no, we don't want a war. The Russians say, no, we don't want a war. You know, the Americans say, no, no, we don't want a war. The NATO says, no, we don't want a war. But it's coming, you know, they're just lying. And Putin is also lying to his people because they're all the same. We are going to die, not them. You know, the elders, the elders, they decide when the war is coming on. You know, it's happening. It's going to happen. And the youngsters are going to die. Then the next stage, the CIA and their Air America imports the drugs into the U.S by using the United States Air Force. So here you see, this was Taliban control in the year 2000, 2001. No more, no more opium people. And even the official United Nations statistics, they show the same columns. You know, if you want to look for it, if you want to know it, you can find it. Even the official statistics. Before here, it was CIA control, Air America stuff, or the uh, the ones coming after that. Air America, of course, was during the uh, the Vietnam era. But they're still doing it, right? Eh? So this is the Afghan production of opium. Uh, this here is eight thousand tons. That's eight eight million kilos. You know here. Under American control, under NATO control, 8 million kilos of opium. 
under Taliban control, nothing, a couple of kilos, you know. And afterwards, it was CIA, NATO, ISAF, what you saw on the airborne, the US airborne, it says ISAF. Um, what does it mean? International Afghan Forces, S security they they would they should say international opium afghan forces or something uh, so this is the reality people facts 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 look at the statistics facts don't believe the media don't believe your politicians just look at the facts and nothing else don't don't get yourself charmed up by some hollywood films facts 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 and nothing else people and then in the end, final stage on American soil, the mafia takes over to distribute the poison to our children. So just look at the pictures. I mean, yeah, it says 2021. I mean, how come there's so much opium when the when the, the NATO forces, the US Army, when they are in, in Afghanistan? And how come? You know? This is on YouTube on channel Kimbury. Just look for Kimbury Streets of Philadelphia, Kensington Avenue. It's, it's, it's horrible, people. And they all work together. All these organizations, these fraternities, whether it's Navy SEALs, Knights Templars, Freemasons, the Mafia, it's, it's all one and the same gang. And they kill our children. Look at it. They kill our children. You know, bring the Taliban in. They they'll they'll deal with it in twenty four hours. I tell you, bring the Taliban in. I mean, I'm not a Muslim or something, you know, but you know, bring the Taliban in. Look at this. This is horrible, horrible, horrible. This is America. You know? look at this. All of this. Look at this destroying our youth because the royals they need money the elite they need money so they destroy us you know, make you addicted it's all satanic just just says the navy seals rituals blood rituals blood pinning it, it's all satanic you don't do a blood ritual you don't do that all of this is one and the same octagon Nazi Templar organization with ancient pharaonic voodoo blood rituals and other evil practices. Alone, these blood ritual cowards and their various voodoo fraternities are nothing worth. You punch a nine mil hole in them and they leak like anybody else. The problem is though, these cowards never come alone. The Nazi SS was the same, and their initiation blood ritual consisted of a blood group tattoo under the armpit. And as with any tattoo, a little blood drips out. Also, this definitely is a blood ritual to get initiated, just like the US Navy SEALs, the Mafia, the Masons, and the Templars. And also, the SS was all about killing, looting, and big money, just as the rest of them blood ritual fraternities like the seals the mafia the templars and the freemasons it's all the same and they do all the same it's all about money wealth looting killing it's all a big lie people just look at the facts around all these robber barons and their fraternities the Mafia acts the same as the nobility. They don't work, they steal, they murder. 
They parasite on another man's labor. They are very rich. They deal drugs. They live in clans. They're protected by the authorities. The mafia and the nobility, they are the same. They do the same. They behave similar. They act the same. Eh? Don Carleone, Lord Lionheart. This pancake here has two things in it, two saints. The cross is for Saint George, and in the middle is the Archangel Saint Michael. And also this the nobility has in common with the Mafia, the veneration of Archangel Saint Michael in the Royal Order of Saint Michael and Saint George, which you can see here. And where Saint George is the protector saint of the Knights Templars, and Saint Michael is the protector saint of the Mafia. And the nobility has them both, combined and united into one order, the order of Saint Michael and Saint George, as if the Mafia and the Knights Templars were the children of the nobility, getting each one of the nobility's saints for personal use. And yes, in fact, the Mafia and the Knights Templars are the nobility's children. So here she's got the pancake on her chest, the left chest, remember the left chest where they have to bleed the Navy Seals with the pinning, the Mafia, the, um, the Freemasons with the sword, the Knights Templars. So here you see a bigger picture of it. The red cross is refers to Saint George and in the middle you got Saint Michael, the Archangel. These are the Slayer Saints. Therefore, one sees a lot, a mixture of both, like children sharing their personal saints for the occasion, like the Italian Templar Abbey in Monte Scaglioso, named after the Mafia Saint, the Abbey of Saint Michael. Here you can see that, Monte Scaglioso, which is a Knights Templar um, Abbey, so they should have the Saint Saint George, but instead of that they have the Saint of the Mafia, Saint Michael. And you can see this here in the Wikipedia website of um, list list of Knights Templar sites or Saint Michael of the Mafia wearing, wearing a Templar's cross. So this is Saint Michael, here it says, Sancte Michael Archangeli. So he should have, um, and he has a, 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 a Templar's cross on his chest and behind. Uh, whereas the, the Knights Templars, usually they have Saint George. So it's like the children of the nobility sharing their saints. Or t shirts honoring the Mafia's Saint Michael mixed with a Templar's cross. Now here it says Saint Michael the Archangel with a Templar's cross. So it's um, like mixed Templars and the uh, Mafia in here. And here it says, pray for us, right? Pray for whom? The nobility. Uh, you know, the Mafia is praying, the Knights Templars are praying, right? It's praying is all about slaying. Praying is slaying, and they're slaying us. Here you can see it on their royal website here. 
and it says the order of saint michael and saint george i can't show it all because here cookies i don't want to take the cookies all right here you can see the um the horse of the knights templars with the the unicorn so this is interesting originally bestowed solely upon those in high positions well it still is eh? In the, in the Mediterranean, eh, that's why I'm telling you, eh? Knights Templars, uh, Commanderies, Sicily, the Mafia, Don in the Mediterranean. Eh? So the order originally was for those on high positions in the Mediterranean. And the order of St. Michael and St. George now recognizes uh, servers in a foreign country or in relation to foreign and commonwealth affairs for example the work of foreign service officers and diplomats so they say here it's not anymore for solely for persons in high positions and then they say they talk about service officers and uh, diplomats so nothing has changed and here you can see it on wikipedia the order of saint michael and saint george so Saint Michael is the Mafia and Saint George are the Knights Templars and they are the children of the nobility. And it's named in honor of two military saints. You know, that's what I'm telling you, the Slayer Saints. Praying is slaying. Saint Michael, Mafia and Saint George, Knights Templars. And you got this thing here with seven branches and and this part here you find everywhere in secret symbols in logos i already shown this to you this thing here and um so i'll show you some of the pictures here oh there was a um here's a templar's cross here and here's the crown meaning the knights templars they come out of the crown and um, here again knights templars and here's got saint george in the middle and it says hospitium melioris avi something like um, when you look well uh, things uh, you see it better or something uh, I'll look it up later. Well, we all know that one. I don't know what that is. So here it is. This is an octagon all around. The cross is uh, St. George of the Knights Templars. And in the middle here, you've got the other Slayer Saint, St. Michael of the Mafia. And it's all in the octagon. It's all from out of one thing. And this, I couldn't read it before when the queen was wearing it, but this is what it says on her breast. I'll look it up later. Slayer, saints. You know. Why does the saints have to carry a sword? Eh? Look, this is us, the people, and this is them, the nobility, Pharaoh. Praying is slaying. Right, that's the garment of the queen. Uh, the garment of the queen. Octogon. Well, this is interesting. Should count here the, the numbers. Here it's three. Oh yeah. This is three. And this from this to here it's four concept of three and four but here it's five uh, here also five i'm sure there are a lot of i, I need some more time i i didn't prepare this i'm sorry so now you know what this is this is the order of saint michael and this one too saint michael and saint uh george hey georgie Oh, yeah, here and this one too here's the blue sash for the war because they are the slayer saints yeah uh for the uh, the blue war crown of pharaoh and red for the pertasser red house where they come where they come out of these slayers eh? 
Here's another slayer, the same colors. Let's kill some slaves and pray to the, the slayer saints. Well, I guess that's the end of it. Go back here. So, um, oh yeah, to the end. Well, it's very interesting to read it. Uh, I'll let you read it yourself. They got chapels and privileges, you see. And here are some members. That's, um, of course, the Duke of Kent. And a Yamshid bin Abdullah of Zanzibar. Uh, what's an Arab doing in here? Or a Muslim? Uh, he's, a, he's a Muslim prince or a Muslim pharaoh. You know, it's the same. We all have the same problems, people. And this one here was from 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 Tahiti or what is it from Jamaica or something? Well, it sounds Indian. Shridat Rampal. Look where is he? Oh yeah, that's Indian. Guyanese. Oh, even the Indians. You know, we all have the same problems. Yes, yeah, the Muslim. He also has the sash and everything. Uh, uh, what are you smiling about, eh? Things going good, eh? Ah, no. Papua New Guinea, same thing. James Carlyle. Uh, well, I mean, I'm not going to show them all. Uh, oh, look at this, folks. Wasn't there the guy with the mask, with the um, with the white mask? Uh, his name was Folks as well. The um, uh, I forgot the name. You know the mask you guys are wearing. The Baroness Ashton of Upholland. Oh, you got you got the, the Flatlands. That's Down Holland, and this is Upholland. Interesting. David Attenborough. Oh, okay. Oh, here, here's what they, the Governor Generals and Solomon Islands, British diplomats. What else? They're all governors, Governor Generals and diplomats here for the overseas and royal families of, of the Muslims and Indians. So, the Order of St. George and St. Michael and their children, the Mafia and the Knights Templars. The Mafia Red Flower of Don Trompleone gives away the Mafia's royal origins, referring to the Pertasser Red House of Pharaoh, standing for the nobility's old world order. And the cat is replacing the nobility's lion, as his forefather, King Richard Corleone, liar's heart. Saint George and Saint Michael are both so-called slayer saints. As Saint George gave rise to the Georgia Saint George Guidestones to slay 95% of humanity, which I explain in this video here. So here's the title. Don't have yourself like um, torn away by this here, Happy Not Here 2022. But here, the activated St. George Guidestones on the same channel, Gure, about the St. George Guidestones. The Mafia is just another military crime wing of the nobility's Knights Templars. And that's why you see these Knights Templars of today with mask masks on, 
in Catania, Sicily, which is um, one of the head towns of the Italian mafia. So here it says in Catania, Carmine. And well, this is in German, I couldn't find it in another language. It says here, non nobis domine, non nobis et nomini tua, tuo da gloriam, you know, the Templar slogan. And here they are again. This is in Sicily. You see the relation with the Knights Templars and the Mafia. Well, here it is, people. Yeah, become a, a Catholic Templar. Well, Templars were Protestants anyway. Well, actually, they were nothing, but they founded Protestantism. Um, but in the beginning, they uh, pretended to be Catholic, of course. And if that didn't work out, when that didn't work out, they um, they founded the, uh, the Protestant religion with Martin Luther and his um, his wife uh, Katharina von Bora having a, um, a Templar coat of arms in her nobility coat of arms. Yeah. They just switch all the time. There's a bunch of switches and, you know, like Richard Liar Hart. You know, that's what it's all about. And this here, the same picture, it's from their website. And they call it Priorato, which means La Priore in French, or a priory, like the Priory of Sion, La Priore de Sion. And it says here, Priorato di Trinacria, Messina. In Messina, the Knights Templars, they did have a Templars commandery. Catania, and all these towns are the typical mafia towns, Messina, Catania, Palermo. And the Teutonic Knights, they were in uh, Palermo. So here you can see the relation between the Mafia and the Templars. So even today, they still have the Knights Templars, as you can see here, in these typical uh, Mafia towns like Messina, Catania and Palermo. So it really is the same thing, people. They do the same thing, they murder, they kill, they're only after the money, they all adore Jesus Christ and uh, the other saints, uh, the archangel Saint Michael, they do a, uh, a blood ritual, it's, it's the very same thing. Yeah, I'll read it for you, this is already 10 years old. Mafia rituals revealed in southern Italy. A mafia raid in southern Italy has discovered a code detailing the rituals a person must go through before they can join the notorious Ndrangheta. The local mafia, the local found out what joining the mafia involves and how the evidence can help convict some of Italy's most wanted criminals. Here you see a picture on one side is the um, Madonna. Or the archangel Michael, and here they burn the uh, the paper with the blood on it. The 12-page document was found during a raid in the Calabria, Calabria region in July. Uh, Gazzetta del Sud reported on Tuesday a similar find was made last year, while other such documents in the region go back as far as 1888. Um, John Dickey, author of the Mafia Brothers and Mafia Republic, said membership rituals are common among Italy's criminal networks. They are Freemasonries of criminals and murderers. You see, it's all the same thing. Navy SEALs, um, Templars, Freemasons, Mafia, and it all comes out of the nobility. I go on. Rituals help mold identities and establish them as a race apart. Uh, the would-be member is shown into a dark room with other members standing in a circle. They are made to declare an oath. Their finger is pricked and their blood is dropped on an image such as the Madonna or the Archangel Michael. Then the image is burned. He says of a common ritual, but before even getting to the ritual, 
ritual stage, a mafiosi's criminal caliber must be proved, for example, by killing someone. The, und the, the uh, Andrangheta mafia has several rituals for, sev for different ranks, evidence of which can be used against members uh, by the Italian authorities. It has a specific anti-mafia law passed in 1982, so significant that the mafia murdered the person who proposed it. It allows the state to prosecute people for being mafia members without a specific crime, pre-crime laws. Hey? And of course, the um, the authorities they um, they are, I mean they come out of the same origin as as the mafia and uh, it's all Freemasonry, so got, they're going to use these pre-crime laws not against the mafia but against us all. It's just a pretext, you know. Um, this is important because often the boss will never press a trigger. Just 12 pages of notes on how to join the Andrangheta could therefore prove vital in convicting the dozens of suspects uh, arrested in the July raids. A piece of evidence makes it an open and shut case. So it's the same. It's all the same. They do the same. They act the same. They, um, it's all the same organizations. Here as well, this is the initiation rituals of the Mafia, and uh, it's in German, but it doesn't matter, I'll explain it to you. Um, it's, it's all here in Sicily, the Yakosa Nostra, you know, they, they, they cut blood here out of a finger, and then here the card of some saint like the archangel or saint michael they burn it here's fire and then they're all blood sacrifices it's all voodoo and it's all from pharaoh the uh Andrangheta in calabria they do the same thing uh, the camorra they do the same thing it's all about blood and even the uh the japanese yakuza they mix the blood with sake and then they drink it and uh, they also have to drink the blood of, uh, of of their brothers. The triades, it's the same thing. They mix it with wine, the blood. It's all evil stuff. And it all comes out of the aristocracy. So those who can read German, you can read it. But uh, you know, it's the same thing. It's all Freemasonry. It's um, this is the illegal mafia. Now you got the authorities, the Freemasons, nobility, the, who are the legal mafia, and it all comes out of the Knights Templars. And the King of France, he didn't lie. They were evil. They were Satanists. They were doing a lot of strange, evil, satanic rituals. Uh, just as the Navy SEALs or the uh, or the Airborne, or uh, they all do the same. And I mean, look at it, Navy SEALs. Uh, uh, who's giving the orders? You know, the Freemason, the President. They give the orders, and they go out killing people. You know, and the politicians and the elite they make big money. You know, about drugs and in Afghanistan, the oil in Iraq, and and so on and so forth. So in America, and also the Sicilian Mafia, they call this a made man, which is a fully initiated member of the Mafia, and who has taken the oath and the blood ritual, and um, the oath of the Omerta, you know, from Saint Omer, the Knights Templar. Look, the Mafia live in family clans, just as the royal houses of the aristocracy and only marrying each other which the mafia does and the aristocratic houses do and if we look at some prominent mafia families with similar names for the most notorious mafia towns like palermo Trapani, Messina, and Siracusa. They used to be 
a Templar commandery, as if sort of the Knights Templars attracted the Mafia, and very similar fraternity based upon secret oath, stealing and killing. So here are some names of the most notorious Mafia towns in Sicily. The Palermo Mafia, there was a Teutonic Knights commandery. Trapani Mafia, there was, and maybe there still is, a Templar commandery. Messina Mafia, there was a Templar commandery. Syracuse Mafia, Templar commandery. And then there was Enna, Catania, Ragusa, Agrigento. So these are really the most notorious mafia towns in Sicily. And at least half of them, they had a Templar's commandery, which, which is no coincidence at all. Here's a list with all the notorious mafia towns and their mafia clans and family. It's in Italian, but it doesn't matter. The names are in Italian anyway. So here, here you see the names that I've just been giving you. I just gave that to you. Palermo, Teutonic Knights. Agrigento, Trapani, Templars. Caltanizetta, Enna, Catania, Siracusa, Knights Templar Commandery. Uh, Messina also. It's, and I show this to you because it really has mandamento. I don't know what that means. Eh? But anyway, here's uh, families, mafia families. And I'm showing you this. So there are 322 members, I suppose, affiliati, affiliated. I'm showing this because the aristocracy has the same system and they do the same stuff. They're also set up in families, which they call houses. The house of Gotha Coburg, the house of um, Orange, the house of Windsor. You know, it's, 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 it's really the same thing. And that's why the authorities never do a thing against this. And here's another list from Wikipedia in English this time. And um, it really is like the nobility have split up, you know, into a legal part and an illegal part. And it looks like the illegal part is, is the biggest part of the nobility. But anyway, at least they're working for them. Which we could see with that judge, you know, with all the, in the other film. With all the uh, nobility symbols she was having. So, you know. And with Richard Liar's, Liar's heart. You know, the, the nobility had a big impact there in Sicily, which you can still find in the, in the names of the towns called after the liar's heart. Now here's a list of noble houses from Wikipedia. And if I look at this list, you know, it's like looking at the list of the, uh, the mafia clans. It's the same setup. Yeah. All these houses, only they, they don't call it a clan or a, a, they, they call it a house. Yeah, the house of Churchill. You know, he's, he's Winston Churchill, his father was uh, a duke of uh, Blenheim Castle. Well, the list is very long here in France. See if oh. well, mo most of them they're not even on it, you know. Well, it's very long, so I'd, I'd rather stop. I just want to tell you that the uh, the family, the clan, or the house, whatever they call it, it's another similarity with with the mafia, and it definitely is the same thing, people.
Here's another list of uh, in Wikipedia European noble families, but even Albanian noble families that there really are everywhere. Everywhere. And again, it's like looking at the list of the um, of the mafia clans. You know, normal people. We normal people. We don't have all this, right? Maybe there are only two sorts of people in Europe who are having this with family clans. That's the mafia and the nobility. So uh, forcibly, they 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 must be the same. You know, they have the same. Normally, people they don't do this. You know? So it's the same origin, and they do the same things. They have the same uh, satanic blood rituals. It's all about money and killing, and and then they say they're a nobleman. These ones here, they say they're a nobleman, and the mafia say they're honor man. You know, there's no n nothing noble and nothing honorable in it. Here, yeah. let's have a Templar. Mafia trip around Sicily. So here is Palermo, a notorious mafia town where there is a commandery of the Teutonic Knights, and right next to it is Cephalo, where Alistair Crowley was. Here's Cephalo, Alistair Crowley, Teutonic Knights. In a big mafia town. Yeah, this is about about the Teutonic Knights in Sicily, and they were in a thing called Magione or Magione, no, Magione, I think, in Palermo. And Palermo is one of the most important. Well, I just showed you eight very important, notorious Templar towns in Sicily. Now, how come? The Knights Templars were in the same town. Here you can see his wife may have been, his wife of King Henry may have been a Norman princess, but the Sicilians didn't welcome Henry in his suit of German knights. You can see still the Sicilian people, they don't want the mafia. The same as then, the Sicilians didn't like the, the German knights, you know. So the new king installed several commanderies. Of recently founded Teutonic Order of Knights in Sicily, several, yeah, appropriating that for them from the Cistercians, what I've been telling you all the time. So the Palermo's, Palermo's Magione Church and Cloister, uh, which they held for several centuries and constructing them, well, etc. So Palermo, I just want to prove it to you, right? Palermo is a mafia town, which I've shown you, and the uh, the Teutonic Knights had a commandery there, and that's the reason it is a mafia town, because they are still there, and it's all converging converging into the nobility, where they all come from. The next Trapani. A notorious mafia town where there is a Templar's commandery, which is not a coincidence. So here was Palermo, here was Alistair Crowley, and here's Trapani. Knights Templars and Mafia. And there it is, Knights Templars in Sicily. And here it says. There were other commanderies at Caltagirone, Trapani, Siracusa, Butera, and Lentina. The most important at Messina. Every time when there is a big mafia town, the most important mafia towns, they had a temp either a Templar's commandery or a Teutonic Knights commandery, and this is why we still have the Mafia today. 
and there are multinationals just as the Knights Templars they're everywhere and um, protected by the authorities then next Syracuse which is a notorious mafia town and there is a Templar commandery so we had Cefalu, Palermo, Trapani and we go all the way around we pass here Corleone the King Laia Hart and uh, Agrigento very important mafia town and we go all the way around we get here to Syracuse where the Knights Templars had a commandery uh, which is uh, belongs to the eight most important mafia towns of Sicily Syracuse and what do we see surprise surprise Syracuse the mafia town by coincidence they also had a Templar commandery there were other commanderies of the Knights Templars here at Caldagirone, Trapani, Syracuse. Wow, coincidence? No, of course not. Then next, Catania, which is a very important and notorious mafia town. And you can see the mafiosi walking around today in Templar outfits, even receiving the Pope. So Mafia and Knights Templars, it's all the same thing. So let's go around again. Alistair Crowley, Cephalo, Palermo, Teutonic Knights, Trapani, Knights Templars, Richard Lionheart in Corleone, we go all the way around, Agrigento, Syracuse, Commandery of the Knights Templars, and here we are, Catania where they walk around in Templar outfits, which I'm going to show you now. And this is Sicily, which is the bridgehead from Europe going into the Crusades, where they did some more pillaging and um, killing, and um, just as the Mafia does, same thing. So here you can see in this mafia town of Catania, you see the Pope here. These are Swissies, of course, the Swiss, the Pope's guard. And here are the Templar dudes. Look, and they're even taking over the police role. Here, you know, like protecting the Pope. He is, this one is sort of drawing his sword almost. So during the daytime, you know, the Templars, they walk around in these sort of uniforms in Sicily. And in the night, they change uniforms and they take out their knives and slice your throat. And here you can see that all of this is happening in Catania. Here it says in Messina, Catania, Palermo, the typical uh, mafia towns which apparently are full of Templars and they, there were Templar commanderies. So here again, you can see this picture here again of the, the Pope coming in Catania. Is it Catania, Catania, everywhere. There he is again, the Pope here. So during the daytime, they have been Templar suits, these mafiosi, and which they change when it gets dark, you know, into some mafia closing and uh, take out their knives. Right? Even got a Templar cross on his mask here. Can you believe it? That's what happens when I. Yeah, you know, what's he having on his. Yeah, Templar's Cross, look at that. Perfectionists, eh? So... Uh, I 
Now you can see all these pictures here. It's everywhere. Catania, Catania, Catania. So you, you can ask yourself, you know, why don't they do these Templars? Apparently they're very organized. Now you see the M for Master Mason, Malt. Why don't they do anything against the Mafia? You know, it's that they're having swords, they're very organized. Even taking over police functions, as you just saw. Oh, because it's the same thing, you know. It's the same thing. Oh, look at this. You remember this here? The two Swiss guard in the, in the Swiss parliament. They all stayed, you know. When they're all raising their arms, all the, the Swiss presidents, you know, like a Nazi salute, and they're having this white on top and red down. The very same stuff, eh? Because it's all from the Knights Templars in Switzerland, you know, the guards there, you know, of the, uh, the Swiss presidents. So, this is about Catania, which I just shown you on the map of Sicily. Then next, Messina, a notorious mafia town. And of course they have a Templars commandery. So I'll do the whole round one more time. Alistair Crowley, Cephalu, Palermo, the uh, Teutonic Knights, Trapani Knights Templars, um, Syracuse, Knights Templars Commandery, Catania, all these guys walking around, you know, receiving the Pope, walking around in Knights Templars outfit. And here we are, we have N N Messina. And here's Italy, or somewhere here. So when King Richard, he came down from Italy, he, he crossed the dip here, Messina, and he, uh, the first town he, he hit, he, uh, he looted it and, and, and burned it all down, raping the women, Messina. So let's have a look if there's a Templar commandery. Okay, about the Knights Templars in Sicily, Messina. Let's have a look. There were other commanderies at Calta, Girona, Trapani, Siracusa, Butera, and Lantini. We already had that. The most important at Messina served as a major stopover for crusaders and pilgrims en route to the Holy Land by sea. The commanderies at Marsala and Trapani also served the order in this regard. So, next to the ones I, I, I already mentioned, you know, there are many, many, many other uh, Templar commanderies like Marsala, there's the word Mer for pyramid in it. And um, the Magione, Messina, it's, it's all over. And uh, many, uh, well, we don't even know of, you know. So I've never seen a place with such a density of Knights Templars, commanderies, and such a density of Mafia. And um, so I've proven you here the link between the Knights Templars and the Mafia. And that, in fact, they're all the same. And here, of course, the notorious Richard Lionheart, Don Corleone of the Sicilian Mafia, Cosa Nostra. Here, Corleone. So, and here, Caltanizetta, Enna. They're all Mafia towns, notorious Mafia towns. So now you know the map of Sicily, eh? I hope you never forget it. I showed one more time. So these here are the typical mafia towns of Sicily on this list here. 
Palermo, Agrigento, Trapani, Caltanizetta, Corleone, Enna, Catania, Siracusa, Ragusa, and Messina. So here you see, Palermo, they have a Teutonic Knights commandery. I show, remember the map. Trapania, and, and all these towns are the Mafia. It's really a high concentration of Mafia. Trapani, Mafia, and a Templar commandery. Messina, Mafia, Templar commandery. Syracuse, Mafia, Templar commandery. And Catania, Mafia, and you, you saw them all walking around in their Templars outfits receiving the Pope, eh? Enna, Mafia, Ragusa, Mafia, Agrigento, Mafia. So, it's all related to the Knights Templars and the nobility. And if you look at the octagonal tattoos of the Italian Mafia, which you can see here, there's no more doubt that this comes all from the Templars' octagon. Just as the octagonal tattoos of the Russian Mafia, which you can see here. It's all the same, folks. It all comes from one central organization, which has several international branches all over the world. And this is from a YouTube documentary showing the octagon uh, by a Andrangheta member of the Calabria Mafia in southern Italy. And if you don't believe me, here's the title in German, here's the channel, and at 9-11, what do you know? At 9-11 you can see the octagon. Well, th this is, this is, well, I'm getting goose skin, really. I mean, Octagon is behind 9-11. I didn't even see this, folks, but uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Nice. Apparently, only the Ndrangheta wing of the Mafia make 53 billion euros a year. And they're at the top of the global cocaine trade. And they are the only crime organization acting in all five continents. And the authorities do nothing about it. Which is becoming quite clear why. So I'm sorry, this is the Guardian, the Bangkok Post, but I can't show the articles to you because I don't want their cookies. So, Ndrangheta Mafia made more last year than McDonald's. Wow. The Ndrangheta Mafia from southern Italy made more money last year than Deutsche Bank. And McDonald's put together with a turnover of 53 billion. Yeah. That's seven, yeah, 53 billion euros. That's 73 billion dollars. You believe it? Authorities do nothing. Yeah, it's everywhere. Oh, there was probably, uh, there was a, a year before when the dollar was uh, still uh, worth a bit more. So it was still 64 billion in 2021. There's still 50, the same 53 billion euros. And here we are. Oh no, this is, okay. It's the other way around. So, okay, of course, yeah. The dollar now is less. Before in 2014 here, the dung, the uh, Ndrangheta, they're still earning 53 billion, both in two, four, 2014 and 2021. But in 2014, the, it was still $73 billion. And now, a couple of years later, you get only, well, only 10 billion less, $64 billion for 53 billion mafia euros. And it's 2021. Thanks to Mr. Trump, eh? I mean, this is a fact. 
Mr. Trump, he, um, and this is actually what he did, you know, he made the dollar cheaper to, uh, to make more exports. Well, that was he was hoping for, you know, with his, um, uh, with his economic war against China. So, uh, you know, to, uh, to get down the, um, uh, the uh, amount of uh, imports from China. So uh, when the dollar is cheaper, then uh, well, there are, it's 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 a uh, it's a desperate move, you know. That's uh, like of a dying state. This is really the last thing they can do is like uh, make the dollar cheaper, and th and that's why America is really getting dangerous now with this thing going on in Russia because uh, economically America is dead. They're dead, uh, so they need a war. So for the ones who are new to this channel, on my other channel, Gatse Fratse, explain about the Octagon. In this video, Octagon, the Empire of Darkness. And this is related to the Octagon, the octagonal uh, mafia tattoos of the various mafias in the world, the Andrangheta in Sicily, in in Russia, they all have octagonal tattoos, and even the police have them. This is a US police cap, it's octagonal, because they protect the mafia in New York. And as they all get their orders from the mayor, you know, and he's a Freemason, and the Freemasons come out of the Knights Templars. So to understand the octagonal tattoos of the mafia, you must uh, watch this video. So for the people who are new here to this channel, well, the Knights Templars have always been the, wor the world's first multinationals. And instead of this picture here with Templar commanderies and a Templar here, you might just as well put the Andrangheta and the Italian Mafia, you know, like here. Because they're, all, they're, they're also all over. Because it's the uh, they are the descendants of these ones here, you know, and they still though know, these Templars they still are by far the biggest multinational in the world, with all their sub organizations like the mafia, and the Freemasons and the police. The Knights Templars were and still are everywhere, with their banks with their drug cartels and multiple crime syndicates and Switzerland as their main base. They're everywhere. Even the media's TV documentaries start talking about the Swiss Mafia, as in this German TV documentary from last month, called Die Schweizer Mafia Ndrangheta Organisiertes Verbrechen Drogenhandel, meaning the Swiss Mafia Ndrangheta Organized Crime, Drugs, Trade. Here it says, uh, here it says, Die Schweizer Mafia, the Swiss Mafia, and here too, the Swiss Mafia. So here's the channel, and here's the title. And here in the, um, under the film it says in German Doku über die Andrangheta, die Schweizer Mafia, da ist das Kokain, tonnenweise Kokain, einer der reichsten und wichtigsten Drangheta Bosse Europas und die sogenannte Schweizer Waschmaschine. So it means, you know, the, uh, the Swiss, as we know, they, uh, they launder, they do the, uh, the money laundry as they've always been doing, because it's, it's all the Knights Templars people. They got a banking wing, they got a killer wing, they got a, a drugs trade wing, and, uh, and then they got the legal mafia who do nothing. To prove furthermore that these multinational Knights Templars criminals and Richard Liar's heart went to Egypt to get Pharaoh's treasures to found the Swiss Templar banks with. There is Pharaoh's island in Egypt, which has a 12th century crusader castle, also called Ile de Grey. 
the Grey Island in French. Remember that the Knights Templars spoke French, just as the entire nobility, including King Richard Corleone Lionheart. So here you see the 12th century Crusader castle. It's called Pharaoh's Island in Egypt. So this is where the Crusaders went to, you know, to get the, the Templar's treasure and get it into Switzerland. I mean, why would there be a Crusader castle in Egypt? Okay. So here it says, it's about Pharaoh's Island here, close to the border with Israel. And worth exploring is the restored ruins of a 12th century Crusader castle, strategically placed to ensure the safety of pilgrims to the Holy Land. The castle was captured by Salah ad in 1170 and used as an Arab stronghold against the Crusaders until 1183 when it was eventually abandoned. So, and then they call it the castle of Salah Din on Pharaoh's island. You can see another picture of the Crusader castle of the 12th century in today's Egypt. Pharaoh's island. And you can read the rest. So Pharaoh's Island is situated here. This is uh, Israel, here's Jerusalem. So I guess the Crusaders, this is one of the roads or which they took from Jerusalem. And then like here, I guess it looks like a river, you know, these, is, these are the places, you know, that are easily, easily to follow, like in the Middle Ages, you follow a river, then you follow the, uh, the sea, and then they went here to Egypt all over, you know, digging for the, uh, for the treasure. Pharaoh's Island, a crusader castle in Egypt, Knights Templars. So with my videos, I established the link between the Mafia, the Knights Templars, the nobility, and their authorities and their base, Switzerland, who are just one and the same group all together. It is a damn setup, people. And the best liars win the game and get everything. Hey, Swissy.